Hey, I'm Victor Margiotta, and this is The Community Show. I have my friend, Tom Bonamo, and uh, we're going to talk family and uh, the Italian culture, because we're Italian, and um, I'm actually going to cook. I picked some uh, butternut squash blossoms. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard of the uh, zucchini blossoms, and uh, we're going to stuff them, and we're going to make some delicious squash blossoms. So. First of all, I'd like to thank Tom for coming on. Thank you, Vic. All right. It's I'm a pleasure so to be here. Yeah, this yeah. is great. This is so cool. You know, I was raised in a family of 10. And, uh, you know, my parents were very hardworking and very loving. And they shared everything they had with us and uh, made us go to church on Sunday. So they gave us some beliefs and, um, you know, a very strong family structure. And, uh, you know, when they came into this country, they made them speak uh, English, you know, it was frowned upon for them to speak Italian. You know, I mean, it's funny because a lot of Italians still have their Italian accents, but uh, but you know, they were it would you were forced to speak English, and um, so you know, they spoke perfect English. You know, my grandparents, who I never I met my grandmother, my mother's mother, and uh, she died when I was in uh, first grade because they had 10 kids and I was, you know, the, almost the youngest of 10. So by the time I came around, my, my grandparents were older, so I didn't really get to meet them. But, uh, you know, and it's funny because I was always jealous of my nieces and nephews because they got to have their grandparents, which was very cool for them, you know. But um, tell me a little bit about That's, your family. Vic, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here nodding my head. I, I've got such a similar experience. and. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm one of seven mm -hmm. kids, okay? Yeah. I'm uh, right in the middle. Yeah. I've got uh, three brothers and three sisters. And um, very similar experience. Uh, my, my grandparents, I had uh, my father's parents mm -hmm. are from Naples, Italy. And... Um, Napoli Don. <laughs> Napoli Don. And my uh, mother's uh, parents, both sides of their family, are from Naples as well. Nice. Um, but um, my my grandmother, my mm -hmm. mother's mother, is from Naples, yeah. and my and she came here as uh, when she was about seven years old, yeah. and her father uh, was born here. His parents were from oh, Naples, okay. Italy, wow. okay? But um, yeah, so very similar experience, and in uh, uh, both houses, now of course in, in my mother's house, they uh, my, my grandfather was Americanized, and and um, they didn't speak Italian, even though my grandmother was from Italy. They, they didn't speak Italian in, in the house, and my mother doesn't know any Italian at all. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Yeah. In my father's house, um, of course, his parents came here when they were adults, and, uh, but the, the, him and his siblings were born here. And um, they, weren't, they didn't speak Italian in the house, although he, does, he did know some Italian, uh, but they didn't speak uh, Italian in the house. Mm -hmm. and, um, they were, uh, it was kind of uh, the way of the world. It was kind of the culture of the time, as you said. Right. They didn't speak Italian. They spoke, uh, they were in America, you're an American, and you, yeah. speak, you speak English. And, sure. you know, it's, uh, that's, that's kind of the way that, that they did it back then, I guess, yeah. you know. You so know, I, I like, don't know any Italian at all. Yeah, I like when you, you know? say Americanized, because my father, yeah. you know, they, they were very American, you know. My... Speaking of the squash blossoms, these are, this is something that, you know, my family didn't really do. And it was funny because when we were kids, we would always eat out at uh, Chinese because we didn't cook Chinese food. So when you go out, what do you eat? You eat Chinese food. But it would have been nice if we went to a few Italian restaurants and tried some different things like squash blossoms. My father was uh, southern Italy, so, you know, more of the northern Italy cooked with the cream. So we didn't really have like the fettuccine Alfredo and the, you know, a lot yes, of the cream dishes right. that, that they make, you know. So actually it would have been nice if we would have went out, but, you know, to this day I love Chinese food. And they tell you not to eat it because it's not good for you, but I love it. I'm sorry. I, gotta, I actually had to have an egg roll the other day. I was like, I'm dying for an egg roll. <laughs> so, but it was good, I'll tell you. But, uh, so... What we're going to do is, um, now I was introduced to these squash blossoms by, you know, Angie's Deli in Verplank. Mm -hmm. Her brother John, who passed away a few years ago, I had a couple of these butternut squash plants in front of my house. 
and he asked me if he could pick them. And I said, sure, I don't, I don't know what to do with them. So he picks them, he takes them to the deli, and he cooks them. And what he did, he's made fritters, whereas he chopped the, the blossoms up and put them in the, the uh, potato and zucchini and onion, and, you know, and then you add an egg and breadcrumb, and then you make balls, you flatten them out, and you make fritters, which are excellent. So he brought them right. over, and I was like, wow, this is really good. So what's the taste of the flour itself? It almost How tastes, is, I would say it almost tastes that? like eggplant, to tell you the truth. Mm. So, but, uh, so then I'm thinking, wow, i got to try cooking these things. So instead of uh, making the fritters, I went ahead and just stuffed them, which I'm going to do now. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to chop up some shrimp. And um, I already pureed. This is actually, this is uh, eggplant. And I put sweet potato and regular potato and onion. And I pureed it with a uh, stick blender. And we're going to add shrimp to it. So we're going to make the shrimp and, and the, uh, the stuffing. And I'm just going to flour, egg, and bread, and we're going to fry them up. So that'll be our first experience. So nice. growing up in a family of seven, tell me a little about your father. Uh, my, my father was uh, um, an engineer. He was called a, a design draftsman, mm -hmm. and uh, he was an engineering, and, and he, was, uh, he was a terrific guy, very family-oriented. Nice. Um, unfortunately, uh, lost his parents at a young age, mm. um, and uh, so he, he was really um, alone at a young age and uh, went and joined the Navy and uh, didn't really get to see much of the world at the time. The war was, was really coming to an end at that time, mm -hmm. and... Um, uh, so he, he spent most of his time stateside, but he, he, he learned his, his craft there, and um, he had a very long, successful career doing that, and um, he always wanted a family, and, uh, you know, a big family, mm -hmm. and uh, he was very successful at that. And, nice. Uh, found the right woman, yep. uh, my mother, and, and, and the way they met was um, um, their parents um, had both worked for Prudential Insurance. And uh, so my grandfathers worked together, and the families became friends. Right. And uh, my father um, uh, admired my mother very much, obviously, and and uh, they um, uh, they started dating and, and uh, got married. He was he was a bit older than my mom, mm -hmm. so he kind of stole the cradle. And <laughs> uh, but uh, they they went on had had seven kids and wow. a very successful family. I mean, I, I love my family. We have a terrific family. And, and my dad was obviously, um, you know, very important to setting the, uh, the values in the family, setting the tone. Yeah, he was a good dad. He was involved in, in our lives. Uh, he knew what was going on and, and uh, um, set very strong values. He was a bit strict, but, you know, he gave us enough, enough room to, to grow and to learn uh, the world. And, and, of course, he, he loved to cook. He loved wow. to eat, and he loved yeah, to cook, well. and he loved his garlic. And I hope he oh got garlic. You got yeah. garlic here? Yeah, it's here. Lots of garlic. Whatever the recipe <laughs> called for, triple it, quadruple it. Make sure you put plenty of garlic <laughs> in it, okay? And uh, he was a real character. I mean, he was the type of person where he'd go into a restaurant, right. and whether he loved what he was eating mm -hmm. or had a problem with what he was eating, <laughs> he would wind up in the kitchen <laughs> and talking to the chef oh and to give, telling him how he usually makes, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, how he does it uh, his way, whatever it was the meal, oh you gosh. know, especially if it was a uh, linguine and clam sauce. Mm -hmm. he'd go, he'd, he was known for going into the restaurant Ooh, and I love linguine telling and the uh, chef how to yeah. make linguine and clam sauce. I was just thinking about that. There's actually a story of uh, where he, I won't mention the restaurant, where he actually did go there one time <laughs> with his own Plant linguine. No plant. way. Yes, and show the chef how to make it his way. Okay. Well, I'll go to some. Last year, I made so many of these. Right now, I, I picked all these flowers just today. So I'm getting like 50 flowers a day, but I have 27 plants. I don't know. I know. It's a little That's crazy. A lot. And I, I wound up putting them in the backyard. And you had a, I had to space them out perfectly because they, they take over a lot of room. So I had to really map out, and I had been growing them for about 10 years now. So I really had a good idea how they grow, and I put them, and you know, I compost my own dirt. So all my, it's funny, because at the end of the year, I grab, everybody leaves leaves out in the, in the 
front yard. I go and grab them and, and I get a pile. It, it's like a 17 hour process of getting these leaves, flipping them over three times, pick and shovel, and then you get a pile of dirt that's it's out of this world. To die it's, for. Oh my gosh, it's, it's like black gold. <laughs> so anyway, I'm getting so many of them, I'm actually stuffing three at a time. So what I do is, what you do is, you take the, the bottom part, you gotta take this yeah. off. Can you I help you? Yeah, go ahead. You take these little, uh, the little leaves off yeah. of the uh, bottom or whatever. So that's what I'll do like. is I'll break it right off the, the stem. And, and I this already, whole thing is edible. Yeah. Even the stem. You could. I'm not eating stems, but you can. So, <laughs> so well, what I'll do is I'll stuff one. one right inside of the other. And then from there, I'll take the stuffing, put it in. All right. Now, like I said, I've also got basil in here. I don't know if I mentioned that. Fresh basil from the garden so <laughs> so there then you just stuff them spread it out squeeze them till they do two of them do two you, actually i'm doing three so get one all right. more mm -hmm. all right you got a lot of these hanging around then you got to use wow, them up i do so like i was saying i'd be, make them and we'd go out to a different restaurant and i'd bring them and share them with whoever's cooking so they would love them and of course they you know they give us an appetizer or something <laughs> so <laughs> I've never seen these on a menu anywhere. But, no. Um, and and, really? and I've of course. Um, they actually have. These they've got made. about uh, a four-day shelf life. So, if you pick them that morning fresh, right? Okay, I'll take it. If you pick them that morning fresh, and um, let me see. No, you didn't take the stem out. Oh, you got to take oh, it I didn't off. The, you got to take the whole yeah, thing out. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. <clears throat> and then you stuff them in there. Now, I've got a picture where you see the stem. When you, uh, when you just see a stem there, they're, they're good to pick. Now, I have a picture where they have the bulb, and that's going to be the butternut squash. So those flowers you really don't want to pick because you want to let it uh, you know, mature. And, um, and then you get the squash. And I have a, a butternut squash there. So with oh, 27 so plants... Are, are these are just kind of decorative flowers that are coming off the yeah, plant? These, yeah, pretty these, much. Not all the flowers. No, uh, har come harvest the uh, uh, an squash. actual squash. Right. Oh, so interesting. Okay. Know? And um, you know, so I'll grow a bunch of different things. Uh, my friend Joe Pisano, who uh, is in the um, first, I'd like to thank the crew for coming and helping out. Without them, we couldn't have a show. So Joe actually grew regular bell peppers. I don't know what it is, but I've tried a number of times and I just have no luck with the bell peppers. I don't know what it is. So, okay, so here we go. We are gonna flower, right? And then we're gonna egg, all right? And you gotta kinda let the, the, the petals cover all the stuffing, right? Okay, let it drip off a little and then you put it in the egg. So now I'll turn on the, the pan to get it hot. We'll let that heat up, all right? See, now when you do this, you kinda wanna let one hand wet and one hand dry, all right? Because if you start dipping egg and, and flour, in it, then you get all this on your hands. So this way, this hand is for the egg. So I turn around and use this hand for the dry, okay? I'm going to leave that right there. And you've got this down to a sign. Yeah, I've been doing it a couple <laughs> years. <laughs> so. And now how many of these will you make in a, uh, a, well, a, a, a cooking session I've been making, session yeah, I've been making um, 16, sometimes uh, 30, 30 at a time. And I've been just eating them. I've been sharing them with friends, and um, people love them. We, well, we went to uh, the Paramount Saturday night. We saw Damn the Torpedoes, right. which is a uh, Tom Petty band, and we got to share them with the, with the other volunteers, which was nice. Everybody liked them, right? Yeah, they were a hit. <laughs> they were definitely a hit. So we're actually going to make the ones that I made for them, which I, I used the regatta and, uh, and the stuffing. So they came out really good. Let's see. Is this pan getting hot? Let's make sure. Yep. 
Okay, so there's the flour, egg, and bread. All right. Now this process you're doing, is this similar to something else, other Pretty things? Pretty much. What else that everything, what, what other Italian everything, dishes do you cook? Everything chicken that you do parm, this veal parm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> every every dish I make is flour, egg, bread. Now you could season the uh, the breadcrumb, you could put uh, garlic and um, parsley, but you know, I don't like to bury everything in seasoning, you know. So it's important for me just to bring out the flavor of the food. So I did not, and I don't like to buy the seasoned breadcrumb because they've already got the cheese in there and the whatever they put in, but I don't like, if I'm gonna have flavored breadcrumb, I'm gonna flavor it myself, you know what I mean? I'll put the cheese in and the parsley and a little bit of garlic powder. Well, this know. way you have, uh, you know what's in there. You know what's, what's going on. With yes. it. Otherwise, you've got some tastes that you might yeah, not Yeah, that I'm not a there. big fan of, for sure. Yeah. So, okay. Nick, how long have you been cooking? Well, you know, we started at the restaurant, the Paradise in Verplank, mm -hmm. which is there 73 years now. And uh, yeah, my father started when he was 18 in 1947. And it's funny, he brought us in when we were young to, to help clean. And, um, and then we learned everything. We worked our way up. We washed dishes, and then we, um, we made pizza. And then you learned how to do everything, waiter, bartend, whatever, cook, you know. So it was funny. I went for a job at a place, and, uh, actually, to bartend. And they said, do you have any restaurant or do you bartending experience? <laughs> I said, well, I've been working in a restaurant for 30 years. They said, yeah, but do you have bartender? I said, yes, I've got bartender experience. <laughs> but uh, my father was the best. He was truly the best. And uh, he was always very patient. But it's funny. He would tell you things, uh, what you're doing while you're doing it, you know. And that was, that's good. So that was always funny you know like you'll be doing something and he'll he'll tell you how to do it as you do <laughs> I know dad I know so so anyway let's well, do in my house, the other we mix. had we had the right way the wrong way yeah, yeah. and Gino's way yeah okay exactly. that was that's how it went in my house right <laughs> so here's the mix and he um, was always right yeah so your dad was always right I'm sure oh yeah so I got the mix here this is the um, actually sweet potato um, eggplant and uh, regular potato and onion. Okay, so we got that. And what I'll do is I'll put some fresh basil in. Okay, and what we do is we take the um, the stick blender. All right, I'm just waiting for that oil to heat up. And I wanted to show you how to do the mix. So now I like to uh, saute all that. It gives it a lot of flavor when you uh, when you saute. So I'll put that right here. Good. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to add the regatta. This I can put down. That shrimp mix. Okay. All right. We're nice and hot here. We're going to start frying these. There's one. Now I have some pans from, uh, they gotta be 40, 40 years old at least, and uh, they're beautiful, I mean, and big. And uh, I could put eight in a pan, and uh, so I'm doing eight at a time, which is cool. And I'll get down to the last one, and that's when I turn the heat on, and then just as I'm finished breading, and I throw them in, and then I start the next batch. So <laughs> everything is timing, you know what I mean? It's all timing. All right, so here's this mix, and now I'll add the regatta. Now you could put anything in here. You could put uh, brisut, you could put, you know, it's amazing, whatever you want. I was stuffing them with cauliflower, which was really good too. So now with the regatta, that makes it a little more Italian. That's Italian. And it's regatta. And it's, yeah, don't say ricotta. Ricotta. Yeah, well, it's, uh, <laughs> talk about Americanized, right? 
Uh, well, let something something stay there. Some yeah. some of the culture, right? Uh, the Italian culture has yep. to stay, right? Yeah. I mean, well, it's uh, like you, when they say uh, manicotti or menagot, you know, or whatever mozzarella. It's mozzarella. So, so your mom's still around. Mom is doing great. Yeah. My mother is is absolutely un, an unbelievable woman. And, um, you know, well, first of all, to have to put up with my father and seven <laughs> kids, she's, she's, she I is know, already, you know, going to be canonized. And, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but she, she's a terrific woman. And, and, you know, you talk about family values. That's, that's where it comes from, you know. And, and my dad, you know, he, he, he worked. You know, we all had our job to do and, mm -hmm. and our, you know, responsibilities in the home. But basically, it's, you know, go to school and learn some skills. And, and uh, you know, dad was the breadwinner. Very traditional, uh, you know, American family, really. Yeah. You know, and mom was a, a stay-at-home mom and, and raised the kids and, um, you know, gave us those values. And, and she's... Uh, She's very religious, and uh, yeah, you know, tell another us how family important value. Going, how, how important, important that is was you know? going to church. Oh my gosh, it was you know you you, you had to go to church on Sundays. That's you know? right, and it was uh, it was a very important thing. But you know, it, it, even more important than than just you know pushing going to church. She lived the values. We right. were we were exactly. taught those values in the home. Yep. It wasn't just something that you did on no, Sunday. No, it wasn't or you just went talk. outside and you right. just did it. You know, we lived in. Of course, we all went to we went to uh, you know Catholic grammar school. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. and um, um, it's it, you you don't just learn it there. You you have to learn it in the home. You of know, course. and and uh, and then make it a part of of the uh, of the household and part of the family. And mm -hmm. and and then it's you know it's not a strange thing. You know, so. Yep. Um, so she gave us some some really terrific values, and she she still does, you know, to this day. She's, yep. uh, you know, we have a lot of discussions, not just not not about religion, but about spirituality, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And and um, you know, religion, of course, uh, the formality of uh, of the spirituality, and, and uh, uh, but oh my gosh, you know, the just just being um, having good spiritual and faithful values exactly. and 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 that really comes down to you know uh, respecting each other you mm -hmm. know and uh, um, of course love loving each other in the within the family you know and and my brothers and sisters I love my brothers and sisters Me too. you know we're all still very close and uh, and my even my cousins you know aunts and uncles and yeah. and and you carry that respect with you yes. when when you go outside of the home and and I would say that even in my in my professional life you know, I've taken that that value of respect uh, for others, and and I think that that had a lot to do with my own success yep. in life, and and my uh, um, you know in my career, and, and social circles and friends. I mean, you and I connect very much. Well, I think that's what's, of, what's helped us connect oh, so there's much. No doubt is, about is it. that uh, you know the family values, the spiritual and faithful values. You know, um, has a lot to do with it. It really it really just makes. It's very important, very important, yep. but, okay. and, and it's important for the for the uh, community, right? That's right. Yeah. All right. So now with these, I'm just going to dress them with a little Parmesan cheese on top. Nice. Isn't that beautiful? We can put a little basil here. All right. So you've got to plate it. That's that's our first batch. Okay. Nice. I don't know and how I much time. I take these and eat, and you finish up. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to share. The buffet table will be open soon. Okay, so we're going to start the next batch. All right, we got five minutes, so we're going to do Moving these real, right along. We're, we're going to cruise now. All right, so we'll put that one there. We're going to go ahead and turn that on. That's on. We'll move this over. Nope, leave that behind. That's on. Okay. Yep, that's good. Okay, this will be ready in two seconds. Now these have the uh, ricotta, so that's why I have the sauce, so we can put them in the sauce, which will be nice. You know, more talk and more work. That's what I less used to talk and more That's work. less. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been doing more talk and less work today, but that's fine because it is a talk show, so we got to do some talking. But uh, so, did you get to watch the show with uh, the police chief from Peekskill, Do Donald? No, oh, it I was didn't very get good. To see that. It was really—he no. does a lot of work with the kids. He's such a great guy, 
And if there's anything you could do for the Peekskill Police Department to get involved or just to go and, you know, see these guys and tell them what a great job they're doing. They I, I really, give them so much credit, uh, I, I tell he, you. He did some job, I'm telling you. He really, yeah. he's a good guy. So glad to have met him. So glad to have him on the show. And um, so glad you're on the show. We owe them a lot. Yeah. They really them. do. Yep. Really it's do. not a, it's not an easy job, I'll tell you that much. Mm. So, all right, so we have these. These are the ones going in the sauce. So, so you were involved in the uh, fife and drum. I got some pictures oh, of that, too. Oh, my gosh, too. yes. Yes, Tell me a little really. bit about that, fife, yeah. <laughs> fife and drum was a big part of growing up and a big part of my family. Yeah. You know, um, um, uh, Gosh, I started playing when I was when I was eight years old, and and uh, um, St. Benedict's Fife and Drum Corps in the Bronx, awesome. and uh, I did that until I was uh, eighteen. You could stay in mm -hmm. it until you're twenty. Right. Uh, it's a community thing. It was it was attached with the with the church though, and um, yeah, we we did uh, parades every weekend. My my life revolved around fife and drumming growing up, oh, and, and again, awesome. really great values. We had a lot of fun. Taught me a, an awful lot about right. discipline yep. and and working with others and and uh, being involved in a community organization. Really important stuff. And again, you know, just uh, important to family. It, it, uh, our friends, all of our friends, were in fife and drum. Uh, most of my friends, uh, uh, who you know, married people either in fife and mm -hmm. drumming or connected with the fife and drum or met through fife and drum. So it was a big part of my life, and and I stayed with it as an adult. There's an adult corps, mm -hmm. the New York Ancients Fife and Drum Corps, spring. and you went and and you checked that out on Memorial Day. We played in yeah. Hartsdale, yes. and uh, yeah, those are those are some some folks that I've been playing playing mm -hmm. with for uh, 50 years, you know. And uh, I'm not as active anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's it's such a big part of my life. But uh, you know, I love seeing these folks. They're a big part of my life. The Fife and Drum is a big part of my life, and it's you know anybody um, that that's associated with an organization that's got mm -hmm. some formality and discipline is going to benefit by it. You know, really about. good. And I play with my brothers, so so um, um, you know I have three other brothers, so the yeah. four of us actually had a quartet, and and we were really good. We we won a lot of competitions. We got a lot of medals hanging from our uniform from <laughs> uh, from uh, playing awesome. together. It was a lot of fun. It meant a lot to me. It was really important. It is. It, really You important. know, with with me, it was the baseball and the football and actually turned out to be a, uh, a good wrestler. But constantly, yeah. you know, having eight brothers, what do you do? You're wrestling yes. around <laughs> constantly. So, you know, and I turned out to be a pretty good wrestler, but all contributed to my older brothers beating me up. So... <laughs> And you deserved uh, it. Probably. Yeah, most of the time you were I did. For it, I'm sure. <laughs> so here we got them in the sauce, and these are the Italian style. Oh. And uh, this came out really nice. So we'll turn that off. That's good enough. And we'll put the cheese on top. This is such a treat. Isn't this beautiful? Oh my like gosh. I said, they actually they got a taste almost like eggplant, and um, and you could stuff them with anything. The the ones I've had with cauliflower were, were unbelievable. They were really good. So so what you do is you got to, and you know what the funny thing is? They're the easiest things to grow from seed, too. I mean, these yeah. things, they're like animals. They come out of that ground, and they're, they're ready to take over the garden. I mean, I've had them climbing over things. They would climb right over all the other plants and just take over. The leaves are like this big. So, so uh you know, it's not an easy thing to do if you got the room, do it. Okay, so I appreciate you coming on. I'm not going to shake your yes. hand because we got uh, mess. I'll pass on that too. All right. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm Victor Margiata. This is the Community Show. I hope you uh, will try this sometime at home, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks. <laughs>